afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Adam Smallwood, and I'm the International Student Recruitment Manager for Moyles Court School in Hampshire in the United Kingdom. Uh, today, I will talk to you about uh, the British education system, but primarily uh, focused on younger students that want to come to the UK and why it's a good idea to come to uh, Britain to a boarding school at a younger age um, and how that can increase your chances of, um, you know, eventually uh, attending a top university here in the UK or somewhere else uh, uh, throughout the world. So here at Moyles Court, uh, we have around 200 students, so it's quite a small school, but really what we focus on is helping students that are of a younger age. So our youngest international boarders are eight years old. Um, we also have a lot of British boarders who are a similar age, around eight or nine years old. And then we continue up through the school until students finish their GCSEs. So until they're about uh, 16. And then they leave our school and go on to one of many schools around the country. Uh, some in the local area, but then some uh, you know, very famous, uh, important institutions that we have connections with. So the reason we are able to and uh, able to really excel in helping younger students is because we don't have this very large uh, span of ages. So we really do just focus on helping younger students. So within our school, uh, the age range is from eight to 16 for the boarding school and in our boarding houses we have separate areas for junior and senior students so this means that everything is age appropriate so we have uh, separate common rooms with um, you know televisions that are uh, suited for different students um, we don't allow you know juniors and seniors to mix um, in certain areas within the school uh, this is really so the older students have some element of independence, but the younger students, they can feel confident and comfortable uh, in their environment without worrying about uh, older students. Having said this, we have a program at the school that also works to create uh, relationships and a, a mentorship system between older students and younger students. Um, this is created by the boarding staff. So we connect some of the older students who are in positions of responsibility, such as uh, the head of the boarding house or um, student prefects and mentors. So they work well with the younger students to uh, help them adapt and get used to the school and to really help them uh, to grow and to develop alongside the staff at the school that also do the same. For the younger students uh, that join us, it does mean that we're able to accept students with very low uh, levels of English and sometimes no English at all. The education system and curriculum for younger students is, uh, it's very broad, but it's, it's much simpler in the sense that there aren't lots of examinations, um, there's not lots of homework. Uh, you could say that the um, education at that age is, a little bit simpler and less stressful. So we find that our students, even when they come at a very young age, they're still confident being in the classroom and uh, speaking with their peers, uh, the other students in the classroom, uh, even with very low levels of English. So we have had quite a bit of experience uh, and success taking on students from between sort of eight and 12 years old with no English at all. And um, within six weeks, we've been able to integrate them into uh, regular classes with um, the other British students. Uh, and within one year, they've been you know, speaking with a British accent, um, really communicating in class and, and having that confidence to, uh, to speak to the other students. Obviously, for younger students, uh, there's much less of a fear and a worry around getting um, getting their grammar right and their pronunciation right. Uh, so because of this, younger students are able to really develop uh, in their English language acquisition at a much faster pace. Um, we have uh, separate English language courses and English language programs for the younger students and the senior students. So the content of these classes is very different. Um, it also means that these younger students are able to 
uh, communicate with students of a similar age group to them uh, and in smaller classrooms where the teacher is able to modify the content uh, to help them access the curriculum uh, in their in their regular classes. So, for example, if you had a student in year, well, let's say year five, so when a student's around 10 years old, um, they'll have one academic teacher for all of their subjects. So they'll be learning maths, English, science, um, art, PE, uh, with a single teacher. So our English language teachers then work uh, very closely with the, uh, the class teacher, with the year teacher, um, to help the students access certain vocabulary that they will need for the classes. So there's a very strong connection between the uh, English language department, so the EFL, English as a Foreign Language Department, and the regular teaching faculty. Um, and it's through these links that we're able to help students uh, grow and develop very quickly. Uh, something we do in the boarding house for our younger students, uh, we focus on things such as table manners um, and talking to them about nutrition. So what we try to do as a school is help students with certain things that their parents would be helping them with at home. So this might be uh, as simple as how to use a knife and fork properly, um, speaking to the chef in a, a way that is polite. So we're trying to give them those manners that they will need to, um, to grow and to sort of get used to uh, British society. Uh, for the younger students, we give them lots of support with um, you know, making sure they go to bed at the right time, lots of emotional support. So if they have any issues or any problems, you know, we have a nurse here and um, students can get access to a counsellor. Um, we do things like read them bedtime stories at night, which again helps them with their English language acquisition. Um, we also have different bedtimes. So for the younger students in the school, uh, the very youngest boarders will have a bedtime of eight o'clock and then it will stagger up by 15 minutes uh, based on their age group. Uh, their bedrooms are also age appropriate. So for the younger students, uh, we have more students sharing a uh, bedroom because they, you know, they like to have that community and that, that sort of social interaction. And then for the older students, when you get into the senior school, uh, you know, there may just be two or three in a room um, up until they're 16. And then, of course, they go on to a different school. So something that's very important for the younger students and again to help them improve their English very quickly uh, is the range of sports and activities that we do. So because the academic uh, curriculum for the younger students isn't quite as uh, rigorous and quite as difficult as it is for the senior students, it means the younger students have more time uh, in the afternoons and evenings uh, more free time. So what we try to do is get them out and doing, trying different sports and different activities. Uh, lots of the time they'll be playing uh, sports fixtures against other schools. Uh, so it's a, again, it's a very good way for them to uh, improve their English, but also get used to this uh, British uh, tradition of um, you know, sporting fixtures, uh, trying new games such as cricket, um, trying athletics out. So it's a really interesting way for international students to come in at quite a young age and really adapt very quickly to British life. Um, within our boarding house, we have uh, 40 students and probably around 20 of those are international students and the others are British. So uh, the combined total of the school is 200 students, but for the boarders, we have 40 and half of those boarders are British and half of them are international. So this means that in the boarding house, uh, international students have the opportunity to speak English with uh, the, their friends in their bedrooms, but also the house parents and the, the staff that stay on site to look after them. So there's uh, many opportunities for students to, to speak English and uh, to learn from one another. So it's something that we really uh, place a lot of importance on, this idea that uh, you know, when students come in at a very young age, they're not just here to uh, focus on the academic subjects such as maths and science and art and history. We really want them to, um, to adapt and get used to, to life in Britain. Uh, something else we do as a, um, as a school, as a junior school, students will have um, a certain number of hours of project-based work during the week. 
So subjects such as history and geography, although we teach them like we do in the senior school, they're taught in a slightly different way. So we might have, for example, a topic, uh, a project based on ancient Egypt. And in that project, there'll be a sports element. There'll be an English speaking, uh, English language element. There'll be a maths element, a science element, a history and a geography element. So students are learning through uh, an exciting project. They're focusing on teamwork and um, they're really focusing on something that's tangible and very easy to to understand. So something like ancient Egypt, for example, uh, for the art element, they might learn how to uh, how to paint hieroglyphs. Uh, for the English language, they might write a um, fictional story about what it was like in ancient Egypt. And then for history and geography, they'll look at the, the region of Egypt and, and uh, the history of the country uh, in that certain era. So it's quite different uh, coming to a boarding school for the junior students, um, especially in terms of the academic program, because it's a lot more focused and tailored specifically to uh, to those students. With the, the junior school, so we're talking students sort of 12 and below, we have, uh, they'll primarily be with a single teacher, so 11 and below, they'll be with a single teacher, um, so they'll be with their year group teacher. So each year group in our school has an average of 12 students, so quite small classes, um, lots of teacher-student uh, interaction. Um, it's very easy for students to develop quickly because teachers have time to focus on each student individually. Uh, for subjects such as sports, the students will um, they'll mix and they try a number of different sports and activities. So things like cricket, uh, rugby, uh, netball, uh, rounders, football. So very traditional British sports. Um, but again, for the younger students, the focus is it's not just on playing the sport, but it's on teamwork, uh, learning things like sportsmanship and gamesmanship. Um, and also, you know, what they need to do, the nutrition and what they need to do to, to stay in, in good shape. Uh, as for the seniors, so we're talking now year seven and upwards. Um, it's when students are about 11 years old, 11 to 12 years old. So when you get into the senior school, instead of having a single teacher to teach you all of these different subjects, they'll start uh, going into classes with subject specialist teachers. So you'll have you know, one maths teacher that teaches all the students maths, a uh, separate science teacher, separate English teacher, separate geography, separate history teacher. So these teachers have uh, more of an in-depth knowledge of a certain subject. Uh, so this means that students start to uh, really work on all of the, um, all of the uh, groundwork that they've done with their year group teacher in the junior school, but in a much uh, more in-depth detail. For international students, uh, there's a great benefit here because coming at a younger age means that they've had the, I guess, the confidence and the kind of comfort zone of a single teacher. So if they, you know, if they don't understand anything, it's the same teacher they're going to every time and they form a very strong bond and strong connection with them. They also have the same students in the classroom all the time. Uh, whereas when you move throughout the, towards the senior school, in the younger ages, year seven and year eight, you'll still have that same group of students, but lots of different teachers. Uh, and then when students move into year nine, that's when they'll start considering different uh, academic subject options. So some students will choose to do history, some might choose to do uh, design and technology, so things like woodwork, things like textiles. Um, some students will choose to do art. So it's really based on the subjects that they wish to study for their GCSEs. So again, there's a further uh, focus and a further specialism uh, as you move up through the school. So for students who have come from, say, Turkey, for example, or um, you know, we get some students from Iran, from Africa, from Europe, from Thailand, from China. Uh, for these students, when they come at a very young age, we see that as they move through the senior school, they're a lot more confident uh, raising ideas, their English language level has reached a position where they're very comfortable and very confident um, engaging in class discussions. So it really makes everything more simple for them as they move up. Um, 
at many schools, uh, our school included, the students pay extra for the uh, for the ESOL, for the English language support. So all of our students get um, five lessons of English language uh, included in their fees uh, every week. But then for students who require further English, um, there's an additional cost. Now, when students come at a younger age, what we try to do is we give them the five lessons of English, but then we put them into their regular class as much as possible when they're ready, um, because this means that they're learning from uh, just from really being in the class and just from speaking with other students and listening to the teacher. Um, and they're at that young age where they can really um, take in a lot of information. For the senior students who come to us in, say, year nine or year 10, uh, they still do very well and they still adapt very well to the British education, but it takes a little bit longer and often they are required to take on extra English classes, which means they have um, less time to spend in their academic subjects. So for that reason, um, we find that coming to the UK at a younger age uh, does make it easier for them and can actually save money year on year. Uh, of course, um, studying in the UK is expensive. And obviously, the more years you spend studying in the UK, the higher the cost is. Um, but something that a lot of schools do, ours included, is having a tiered fee structure for juniors and seniors. So for the junior school, um, they'll pay around 21500 per year, uh, whereas when they go up to the senior school, so year seven onwards, it's around 27000 a year. Um, so... The cost goes up. That's mainly due to the uh, specialist um, teaching, uh, but also certain things like um, the uh, academic provision that's given. Uh, all of our students uh, attend uh, excursions on the weekend. So we take them to different cities throughout the country. Um, and again, these are age appropriate. So the older students will have more time to go shopping and to relax and spend time with friends, whereas the younger students will spend their, um, the duration of their excursion with uh, staff members who will supervise them and make sure they uh, make sure they're happy, but also make sure that they're safe. And all of these excursions will have a specific activity, something like ice skating, uh, you know, going to a museum, uh, laser quest, something like this. Uh, and on the excursions, they'll have they'll spend a lot of this time with the um, British borders as well. So um, there's always this um, learning English through assimilation. So uh, that's that's something that's quite helpful. Yeah. Uh, as far as as far as I am concerned, I don't have much more to say on the subject. But if anyone would like to ask me any questions, uh, I'd be happy to happy to answer them. Thanks a lot, Adam. Uh, let's wait for a few questions if there is any. Uh, you have okay. three minutes or so. And okay, then sure. we will go. Thanks. As you can ask questions, uh, don't be shy. Sorularınız varsa sorabilirsiniz arkadaşlar. Any questions for me? Everybody is so shy. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. that's okay. Well, um, I hope I hope everybody is okay in Turkey with um coronavirus and um oh information about fees. Yeah, sure, sure. So I'll load up our website now. Um so for information about fees, you can visit our website, which is uh moylescourt.co.uk. And on here, you will find uh, a tab that says admissions. 
and in there you can go to fees and it has um it has fees for the uh for the year group uh but also for the boarding so some of our international students uh they will move to uh the mum or the dad for example might move to bournemouth and the students will come in as day pupils which is possible um so we have information about the fees for uh day pupils but for the uh international border fees um it stands at the moment as uh just over seven thousand pounds a term for junior boarding and uh or just under nine thousand pounds a term for the senior boarding just write that for you That's the information about the fees there. Uh, are there any more questions for me? Oh, you're welcome, uh, Fikrit. Thank you. Yeah, it's an interesting time for uh for all schools i think at the moment um with the coronavirus but you know we're using this time uh to try and be as positive as possible so we're doing a lot of um for example my job has changed quite a bit i'm out painting and decorating and trying to get the school looking as nice as possible for students to return in september um so yeah it's an interesting time but i hope everybody uh in turkey is staying safe and i hope you're all i hope you're all doing okay and if your business owners that your businesses are you know doing well enough and uh thanks for thanks for attending this webinar thank you adam thanks a lot uh, thanks for joining no worries and, thanks. Uh, hope you take care as well yeah uh, thank you bye okay bye